want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shab, Bahashim, Raka, Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, Shalom to the elect, the men striving, uh, hopefully, to be of the elect. Okay? And um, I want to touch on a kind of a controversial video or educational, however you want to look at it. Um, because this is all for edification, honestly, to, to build up, build you up, um, and to learn, okay? Now, what I want to go into is um, basically a question. What are, you, what are you in this thing for? Who are you in it for? And why are you in it? Okay? I think some guys, they come in the truth. It looks good. The men standing on the corner with the staff, cutting up scriptures, uh, cutting up Esau and uh, some guys get more of a kick out of, um, you know, getting on Jake than they would the love of trying to bring Jake in, the elect in, you know. And a lot of times, um, you know, guys, they look for, now the scriptures kind of go twofold. You have one minute the scripture says, don't trust in man. Okay, and then the next scripture will say, um, basically, you follow the order. So how are you not going to listen to man or trust in man, but you, you, then you're following order, okay? Now, as, as the scriptures go contradictory to in some issues, but it's not because there's a, a way to understand it. You know, one minute it says, you know, um, it's only for the Israelites. The next minute, uh, all men can make it, you know. It, it'll sound like that. So in this case, I'm just getting on this part. Where it says, um, you know, not to trust in man. You know, some guys are, are, are here as if men are going to save them. Okay? They think their teachers, which my teachers, they think uh, men, uh, apostles and, and elders are going to save you. And that's not the case. Always you got to remember that and keep that in mind. And again, this is not directed towards anybody, but I've seen it and I and I almost feel it in the spirit that that's what some guys do you know you can see that guys that relatively fell off were the main ones going up sitting with the apostles saying hey shalom apostle I love you brother trying to get some type of accolades or, uh, or recognition or acknowledgement for, for them being there when all along they was never really sincere about the truth they was only sincere about looking good okay that's all they wanted they wanted to look good and we see guys that go up there and they, they want to hang out and they want to do this and do that a lot of times they're, they're just in it to look good they want to look good in front of men okay and not just the, the men the, the, the great teachers that teach them but they're trying to look good in front of the whole body okay the whole unit okay uh, let's get a scripture real quick. This is Galatians 6 and 4. Okay? Because this is another scripture that will say what it says, but then it will say something else opposite. Okay? Uh, it says, But let every man prove his own work. Okay? And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. That goes for your brother. That goes for the apostle, your teacher. But at the same time, it says, Hey, love your brother. Rejoice with your brother. You got to understand what that's talking about, man. You know? You have to seek your own salvation. At the end of the day, when this hell breaks loose and things happen, and the uh, head apostles, I'm not going to say their names, but everybody know, but top apostles are not going to come down to your neighborhood near you with a floating chariot and a hanger, uh, 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 one of them wire uh, step ladders rolling out for the chariot for you to climb up in there with your name in Hebrew on the seat. Okay? It's not going to work that way. Only Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is going to be able to deliver you. Yahweh Shah is coming to deliver you. Okay? So you got to be careful with that. The Lord says it was in Nahum the third chapter. The Lord is a jealous power, man. You got to be careful with that. You know? Uh, you know... You know, you got guys that get overly impressed by the, the works of other brothers. And they want to be like this brother. Or they want to be like that brother. I've seen it. I witnessed it. I actually witnessed that. 
A guy want to be like other brothers. And it's okay to look up to other brothers. But do it in, spiritually, in spirituality and righteousness, man. Okay? Do it to seek your salvation. Okay? This is what this is about. If you in this thing to make the apostles acknowledge you and feel good about the truth, you don't belong in it. Now, there's nothing wrong with being acknowledged. I will say that. This is not a video coming against brothers and my teachers and, you know, the order. Because it's the Lord did set up an order. So you still have to listen to men to a degree. But at the same time, it says don't trust in man. What does that mean? If, it's, if you're using proper discernment, you're going to be able to grasp and understand what that's talking about. When someone goes off, whether it's a head brother, another brother, and it don't sound right to you, you got to pray on it. And it may apply to you for that particular time, or it may not. You just don't jump out there and just say, okay, this is where, how it's going to be. For example, the, the so-called black woman. We'll say, stay away from the nigger woman. Okay? On a, and I agree on a lot of uh, on that on a, on a high level. But you never know what the Lord may have in store for you. What blessing he may give you uh, with a woman. And sometimes that's not even a blessing. And, and she may not even be a, nig a nigger woman. She could have a dark skin and be... A, a, a northern tribe who knows because really women are women you know Satan really has the reign over mo all women the only reason why a woman is good to you is because the Lord allowed it to be honest because this was the biggest part of our captivity our women okay so th there's just using have proper judgment okay uh, this word discernment means the quality of being able to grasp and comprehend that is obscure skill in discerning okay so basically comprehending of what's being taught because you got guys who read these scriptures and uh, break down the scriptures about the women break down the scriptures about uh, the supplanting the brothers and you know all these scriptures and they don't try to apply it to every little thing but they don't understand it takes wisdom knowledge and understanding to get that and that's where you have uh, your teachers, like for example, that there's guys that I've known that literally had to uh, ask me, did the apostles say that? Was it okay with the apostles? Like they can just come down, get on a plane, get on a bus, come into your neighborhood, into your camp, and sit down with you with a pen and pad and tell you what to do and how to do it. Some of you, some brothers just have to grow up, you know? It's as simple as that. And some brothers are just young in the faith. They're young in the spirit or young in general. Okay? And they, they don't really quite understand yet. Okay? That's where, where guys who have a little more wisdom or understanding are supposed to teach them, man. Okay? I mean, it's it's not that serious, but you got to be careful. Because if you overdo things and you don't have uh, with temperance, which means balance, then you could, you could find yourself falling out. And let's say you leave, or let's say you, you know, you're not in Great Millstone. Great Millstone is not going to save you, okay? Yeah, Hawashah is the one that's going to come down here and save you, man, if you are the elect. And really, we say Great Millstone because that is the Great Millstone, okay? It's the doctrine. It's the doctrine. So if there's men that's teaching the doctrine, that's what it's all about, okay? Yeah, you know, guys make it like some form of club. I'm in GMS. How many people said they was in GMS and no longer in GMS? How many people said they was in Great Millstone and found out to be wicked? Okay? The scripture says many are called, but few are chosen. So it doesn't... only thing matters is if you are of the elect. Okay? That's all that matters. Okay? Uh, Mark 12 and 30, it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy power, Yahweh, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, all thy mind, and with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. Okay, so now you got to get into that. The Lord set up men to teach you. Okay, now you're being taught. Continue the course. Double honest. Because you got a lot of guys who say, double honest to the apostles. And they're niggas. So does that mean if somebody don't say double honest, that they're, 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 they're not righteous? Okay? Now I say it because... so. People can understand the doctrine of, of what I teach. 
It's all about the doctrine, man. It's all about humility and understanding. Okay? So when you love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all your soul, that's the first commandment. That don't mean love uh, men more than you love Yahweh Bashim Yahweh That don't mean love a brother more than you love Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Hell, you can't love your wife or your children more than you love Yahweh Bashim Yahweh man. Okay? Guys get in this thing and they get a little confused about the hype. Okay? They, they may have not been recognized in their life and they get on here and they make a good video or a couple of scriptures and some breakdowns and everybody on there con con beautiful vid con con and they're feeling more special about themselves remember you're doing this for the, uh, your salvation okay you're doing this in the spirit and the power of Yahweh Yah to be delivered the scripture says store up your, your, yourselves uh, the treasures in heaven now there's always a flip side to that because it does feel good to be able to lift up brothers and build brothers up there's nothing wrong with that it's all about the balance, man. Second Corinthians. Uh, let's get the word sincere. Um, well, let's go to Second Corinthians uh, 1 and 12. It says, For our rejoicing is the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, okay, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God. Now, does this mean that because in the flesh you have some wisdom that you might have bought into the truth that you can't help her brother absolutely you could possibly still help her brother but that fleshly wisdom is this worldly wisdom this worldly wisdom is bullshit okay this is not correct wisdom okay like the school system the educational system okay the GMO foods everything that you was taught is fleshly wisdom but there's brothers who have learned things in the world that have taken that wisdom and have been able to use it as a tool to help brothers in situations that are conformed of the world. Like their mortgage, if they have mortgage or rent or whatever they have coming in the truth. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? So let's get to where it's sincere, sincerity. It says the quality of state of being sincere, honest, honest of mind, honesty of mind, freedom from hypocrisy, from lies. So basically, if you don't want to hook up with me and be my brother, don't come over. Don't hook up with me. Don't go fly out of state to be with me and you really don't want to. That's like going out with some woman and you really don't want to be with her. Don't go out with her. You know? Don't come in my house and break bread and you don't really want to. Don't try to help me with a couple of dollars and you're only doing it because of the look and it, it feels good far as everybody seeing you but you're not doing it out of the spirit and sincerity of your heart which is your spirit don't do it don't be around me if you're not sincere about it why would you want somebody around you that don't want to be around you man I want to be with honest sincere brothers and again it's not uh, you know making a particular point to anybody personally but you know as guys I've seen come and go you know and their sincerity just wasn't there. And I'm sure this is not the only place that this happened. This happened in all camps and all brothers, you know. So, in order to get, the, the, you know, to get to that, the glory, you have to, you know, you have to be purged. And you have to be around wicked niggas. I don't know other way to say it. That's what's going to make you better. That's what's going to make you sharper. Like the brothers in, um... Atlanta, what they went through. The Lord put them through that. And a lot of people have all these things to say. and whatever. Look, man, that's part of learning lessons. That's part of helping you grow. The next brothers come in, they're going to know what to do. However long, look, the Lord will give you everything back two, three folds. You can see a lot of people don't have faith. You can lose everything. And the Lord can build it, give it back to you two, three, four folds. Okay? Or just enough, your daily bread. Because you're going to get it all back in the kingdom. You know? Anyway, I just wanted to make that point that, um, you know, be careful, you know, of, you know, why you do this thing, man. You know? Why are you in it? What are you in it for? Who are you in it for? Again, you know, have a, a sincere mind about 
why are you in this truth? And if you ain't insincere, okay, and, and part of that is being on fire, okay? A part of that sincerity is uh, being on fire, man, okay? Like when you look at, um, um, when you look at, you know, when you look at these words, when you look them up, it's, it all, it all boils around, uh, being strictly on fire, okay? So, um, that's pretty much, you know, that, I think that's pretty much all I have on that. Um, you know, that's all I have on that. I want to say, Shalom.